do a kind of your perhaps argument is it's gone into more of a conscious group thing rather than actually a group consensus, an unspoken known group consensus that creates these things. So it's not it's not necessarily intentional to create. Your argument might be that Islam is the structure that humans need in order to progress as a society and perhaps Well even before that I would say but, but, any, any anything from God, because yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But, but 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 also because without Islam, you might fear or think or believe that society would descend in 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 a moral way. Um, However, well, you can have a stable society without. But what I was actually speaking about is. You can't have objective morals without God. That was my main point. But, but, you know, in practice, what does that mean? I mean, that's a bigger argument as well. But actually, even within Islam, uh, society is descending. It's only the best when Muhammad was here. And it's, it's, it's a, a built-in descent uh, by prophecy. Yeah, I mean, d d even though ha on. having descent or not having descent, that wasn't, that wasn't the main crux of the point. The point I was trying to get to is that from an agnostic point of view, if you try and look purely at history, you can't derive from there morals and imperatives what we need to do in the 21st century. And without God... The commandments are a natural law, they're not God-given. Which is, sorry? The commandments uh, are a natural law, they're not God-given laws, they were society's natural law. I mean, of course, that's what uh, I assume you're not a religious person, right? You're, you're not a religious person. I mean, of course, that's what you would say. He's going to say the opposite. It's just my words against yours. Because uh, it depends what perspective you come from. Because if you come from a perspective of, uh, I'm not sure, are you agnostic or? Uh, no, I'm non dualist. So, non dualist. What does that mean? Yeah, that's a new one. Yeah. What does it mean? Um, uh, I, I believe... Are you a monist then? I believe everything is perfect right, right now. Oh, I see. What do you mean? Do you believe in predetermined fate? Predetermined fate, perfection... I see. It's uh, something like Calvinism, you know. Calvinists it's, it's believe in predetermined fate. fate. Yeah. Right. I, I believe basically this, this universe is a... Uh, is a is an intelligent or spiritual energy, so it's an intelligent energy without a duality, so no good or evil. Okay, okay, okay. But is that, is that really right? Does that sit right with a human being to accept the idea that um, giving charity and running over someone deliberately is the same thing? This is right and wrong is equal. I, I mean, of course, as flawed beings, we need to establish values of good and evil, but it doesn't mean they're absolute. It just means they need to be good for, for us to have a future as a society. No, but why? What he's saying, I think, is different. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's it's ultimate, it's different. Yeah, it's it's different it's, uh, ultimately, everything is... There is there is cause and effect. Yeah. If yeah. you do bad things, X, Y, all, exactly. all the things you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the things that you're saying. Um, but from objectively, there is no good and evil or good or bad. It is all has to be as it is. And it's only our belief system that makes it wrong. So, so your view starts with the idea that the universe is an intelligent, conscious thing, place. Eternal. Eternal. So what makes you think that the universe is intelligence and, uh, and uh, has will, I'm guessing, right? Has, has a, Volition. A, 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 well, kind of, yeah. yeah. Creation, it's so, a creator. So, so, it's a creator. Yeah, so why wouldn't you just go one level high and say God is the creator of the I, universe? I could say the other way around. Why make up a God when you've got this universe that does that? Because when you have something which is intricately designed, like the universe, and you have this order and organization and complexity, then to attribute that to the entity itself wouldn't make any sense. You'd have to attribute it to the one who put it in place. It's like but the. You it's like made, you make something. I'm saying it's a self-creating spirit energy, and right. uh, and it, and it, and the the the, the purpose of it is life. It's, consciousness being conscious of itself. Okay, so before we get to purpose, so if you, before we get to purpose, that like you yourself, you exist right now, but for you to come into existence, there was a myriad of actual conditions, the yeah. conditions of existence for you to come into existence. So there was external input. So why wouldn't you apply that to the system itself if it applies on the micro level? Because why would I? Because the logical thing to do is to use the same inference that you're using in everyday life and use that for bigger problems. 
And what was the second thing you said about purpose? Purpose is, uh, well, I, I think the, 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 in, the intention of the universe is to create it's great, actually, and great, and is consciousness being conscious of itself? Life. So self-awareness. Yeah, life. Everything that is involved in this life. So, um, what would the purpose of life be? Because that would be a description of what's happening. But what would, what is the actual purpose? Then? To live and create. So. I mean, you, you went, I mean, as an idea, essentially you've gone back to the selfie idea, which is the ultimate rationale of life is survival and reproduction. I so it's I, a long way of doing I, the same I thing. I don't think there's very much different between my kind of world universal view and your view of God, except that you give, in my mind, you give anthropomorphic qualities to uh, something outside of this universe rather than actually non-anthropomorphic quality of life. Right, so as Muslims we don't believe in God being anything like a human being or anything we can imagine. So we, we don't have the, this anthropomorphic idea of a man in the sky on a chair. No, I understand that, but yeah. you, I, I, I would beg to differ because I think your anthropomorphization comes from the qualities that you imbue ah. to this. So mercy, Being uh, benevolent, God, yeah. uh, emotion, benevolence, all of those things yeah. are anthropomorphization. Okay, so, so let's look at this. Is it anthropomorphic to believe the universe exists? <laughs> because we exist. Uh, well, I, I guess it's what, what um, I would say, yeah, our existence is perception. So well, we, we, we can't say, for example, if I say God exists and I exist, does that mean I'm being anthropomorphic? Not really, because my existence has a beginning, has an end, when God's existence has no beginning, no end. So for example... You don't know that your existence has a beginning and an end. Well, of course I do, because I came into life, and now I Did will Allah pass away. Did make a contract with you before you came into life? And when you die, does your soul not live on? I mean, the immortality of the soul, right? I mean, we, we live on, but that doesn't mean we existed forever. There is a finitude, and if God wants, he can, he can make us vanish after death, that there is nothing, but he decided for us to live on. So look, what it is is, uh, going back to this idea of yeah. purpose, because for me that was a bit mind, uh, a bit confusing. Are you saying the pure purpose of life is to live? It's creation and life. And coupled with your idea of monism, non-dualism, you would say everything's predetermined. Yeah, so would you. No, well we would say, we would actually say, okay, yeah, we would say free will and predetermination, we'd believe in both, right? Yeah. I, I don't believe that they, those can be combined, but yeah, I okay. yeah. We have a, we believe they can be, it's but from your free, perspective... I don't believe in predetermination necessarily, I believe in um, a, a, a not a free will. Okay, so would you believe in a type of genetic determinism? Well, it's, it's, it's all, of, all of those genetic, social... Um, Genetic and yeah, yeah, but the the issue is even if even if we combine genetic determinism with epigenetics, with uh, behavioral evolution, and with cultural evolution, you would still have environmental cues that will induce that reaction. So there is no big difference between pure genetic determinism and genetic determinism married with other types of cultural are you evolution. Saying, are you saying there's no difference between free will and the illusion of free will? No, uh, I was actually saying there's no difference between the idea that we are genetically determined to do something and the idea that we're genetically determined to do things, but we have different developmental pathways depending on the environment. I I'm saying there's no difference between the two. Uh, I mean, my argument, uh, I think without going into a free will argument, I'm sure you're aware of the argument. Yeah, yeah. Determinism. Um, but without going into all of those things, you, I think you know that you cannot prove that you've got free will or not. And I think within uh, Islam, the, the belief would be this soft, uh, soft determinism, where there's a degree of, uh, there's a degree of choice, um, but a lot of it is, is determined. So, the Islamic view on this is actually 
It can be extremely simple and extremely complicated. So I like to stick to the simple, right? Which is this. God has created us and he's given us free will, but he already knows what's going to happen. So there's determination and there's free will. Now, from a logical point of view, some people are trying to understand how can we make it so? Philosophers, theologians have spent hundreds of years having discussions on this, right? For me, these things are irrelevant. For me, what's relevant is why do we believe the Quran is the word of God? Why do we believe in God? And if God has said these two things, then we believe in them. So for us, it's not like you rightly said, we can't prove it, but we believe in it because we believe in God and we believe in his message. It's true, but then it's tautological ultimately because in essence, what you're, what you're believing in is a book and a person. Um, so you're believing that that was God given through uh, Jibril, um, that you're believing the book and the word of God. You're disbelieving other books, but your belief system is around that. So it would be tautological and circular if you asked me, uh, sorry, what's your name again? John. John. So John, if you asked me, why do you believe in free will and heaven and hell and all these things? And I say, because I believe in God. So why do you believe in God? Because I believe in God, right? So every single time, it's kind of sometimes. No, no, but, but, but the thing is, I, I don't believe it's circular and tautological, because if you ask me why I believe, I will give you evidence for why I believe in God and evidence for why I believe in the Quran. In so that, then it's not totally In logic. regards to free will, um, there's two, two aspects. One, when was the uh, last choice that you, when was the last choice that you made that wasn't contingent on previous conditions? Okay, and, and, um, and then the other thing I will come to. Can I answer this yeah, one yeah, first? Yeah, yeah. So the question, when was the last time you made a choice which wasn't dependent upon previous series of actions going back to the beginning of the universe? Everything. 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 I would say it depends on what, you, what worldview you begin off with. So if you're a monist, if you're a non-dualist like you are, then you would say there is no such thing. If you're a dualist like I am, yeah, like I'm a dualist. So I believe in the soul and you can call it, I mean, in, in the Western, Western philosophy, you used to call it ghost in the machine. But we believe in the soul and we believe that the actions of the soul are independent. So my previous physiological, epigenetic markers and all of the prior history that I have, that doesn't determine my conversation with you and the content of this particular dialogue. But from a uh, monism point of view, non-dualist point of view, you would say, I'm simply saying this because I have no choice. But, but what you're saying is your soul is what's making the decisions. Yes. What and what determined your soul's uh, character? Okay, so we believe that God created the souls and the soul by their nature, sorry? The souls by their nature are good. And it is us who has the ability. So sorry, I'm so sorry. When did you guys start? I'm not sure. I need to feel this. <laughs> You're interrupting a very interesting conversation. Carry on, please. No, yeah, you were saying. You were saying yeah, yeah. What was I saying? What was the last the, thing, John? Uh, the soul. Uh, Can you guys sit down? I think it was the structure. Can you sit down so we understand? No, no, no. Speak up. We're, 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 ne we're nearly finishing it. Oh, We've been okay. speaking for a long while. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. All right. Um, so the question that I ask, my uh, trigger memory, is... Oh no, I was talking about, you're saying that the soul is yes. decided. But your, your argument is that the God has made the soul all good. No, no, no. God has given within the soul, we have uh, weaknesses that, we'll, for, that we will go towards our desires, disobey God. We have, we have those weaknesses, but we have the flaws, but we have something known as fitra, which is our natural state, which is good. And that's good, right? So we don't have the concept of original sin. So we have the propensity to do evil, but uh, we do have a lot of good. That's evil, you mean disobey God? Yes. Okay, so let's call it that, really. Yep. So the fitra is the understanding of God. The innate understanding of God and right and wrong. And the soul is being created with flaws to, with flaws, in contrast to the victory. 
Okay, so this is where the, the distinction can be confusing, right? So rather than calling the fitra something else and the soul something else, just call it either fitra or soul. It would be irrelevant. How do you mean? So there's a whole discussion in Islamic epistemology about where is the fitra, right? I don't want to get into that. Why I rather get into is whether you we want to use consciousness, fitra, or the soul. Just call it one thing. I don't. I, I think that's. I don't think that works with what I understand of the Islamic perspective on the fitra, on the soul, and on the body as well. For you. Okay. Because so you, the fitra in itself, in its quality, is the same in everyone. Yes. So it's it's, it's, it's it's the same nature. It's the same. Well, it's the same nature. Yeah. So it's, it's, but it's not it's, the same essence. It's the same program. Yes. Same program. Yeah? Same programming. But everyone's soul has got different flaws and talents. Everyone has. Okay, when when God created all of mankind, he said to all of them, am I not your Lord? And all of the souls said, yes, we testify. So that was before birth? That was before birth, yes. That, I, I said it was so, before, so, birth. So, yeah, before birth. So when we but come into this... Immediately we can't remember. No, we believe that a reminder from God, then we can. Okay. So for example... No, 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 but go on with yeah, it. Yeah. So, yeah. So when it comes down to us and us being free agents in this world, we believe we're accountable for our actions and God has given us a way that when we do something wrong, we recognize it deep down. And when we do something right, we recognize it deep down. And when someone reminds us of God, it reminds us of that which we already know. So one of the analogies which I like to, uh, to, to uh, think about is this is actually an, an analogy in uh, there's a book called The Divine Reality. It's, it's probably going to be in there anyway. The analogy is about when you're a child and you have a toy, right? It's a favorite toy. You haven't seen it in decades or whatever. You go back to your old house, open it up and you see it. And you may have not seen that for 20, 30 years or whatever. And you instantly have this thing. So the fitra is deep down within us and like an arc. Sorry? Like the Yumei and arc. Yes. So spiritual experiences, using your reason, these different avenues can awaken. But I, I'm not um, I think going into the description of the fitra is, is one thing. I'm talking about the relationship between the fitra and also the creation of the soul. So my argument really is about the fact that you're saying that Allah has created souls with built-in flaws and weaknesses. Okay, by, by flaws we mean propensity to make mistakes. To, to, to disobey us. Disobey us. And uh, the fitra is the programming of the, uh, the, the substance of Allah, the understanding of Allah, the, the understanding of the good understanding and bad. The understanding of good and bad and worship of those things. Yeah, so the fitra calls to something that's good, and your soul, your nafs, it can call you to something bad. So, uh, and, and everyone has an unequal, there is an unequal uh, beginning. Well, this is, this is also another point which is discussed by Islamic scholars about the type of tests and trials one person can go through, another person will not find it difficult. For example, I know, I'll, I'll, I'll accept that. Yeah, so for example, somebody, they'll have a weakness for wealth. Another person will have a weakness for status, right? So they'll have different uh, challenges, but each person also has the capacity to overcome which the other person may not. So overall, it's an equal test. I think in Islam, though, as well. But what, so it, do you think it's considered equal, ultimately? It's, con it's considered equal. It's fair. It's fair. They've, everyone's got their different disability, and, and they've gone and, on a race. And when you got the fitra, and, and they've got their body, which is part part of that disability as well, it's part of that story. Is there a difference between the soul and the body? Yeah, of course, we're physical. Well, no, I'm never saying, you know, are they, in, in, are they, are they, is the body a product of the soul? The body, if you like, for lack of better terms, it's a, it's, it's a vehicle. Right, so and those we've... vehicles are une unequal as well. Because... Of course. So that's part of God's way, isn't it? So this is all this kind of programming, and then He lets out. Um, 
humans with their soul, their fitter and their body into the world and sees who obeys him and worships him and follows his word. And even out of Muslims, very few, I think it's in the, either uh, the words of Muhammad or, or the Quran, I didn't see uh, the words, is that there's a very quite a small percentage of people who go to heaven, even of Muslims. We believe everybody that has the chance. But in no, no, no. In terms of Muslims, we believe all Muslims, everybody that testifies to the truthfulness of God and of His messengers, that they will go to paradise. And the evil Muslims, they will burn in hell for a particular period of time. However, people who've never heard the message, they will have a different test on the Day of Judgment. And we believe that on the Day of Judgment, nobody is going to say, God was unfair to me, right? And look, when it comes to the idea of what you're trying to, I think, trying to get to is God is unjust, right? It's, no, I mean, yeah, to some extent, yeah. there's, there's, there, you're, there's so much programming and there's so many ways to trip up for humans, whether you're Muslim or you're not Muslim, whether you're Christian or Jew, and people are still born into Judaism, and uh, they, they may be ignoring yeah. Muhammad's message, you may be aware of it. You know, these are all challenges. You, you, the, the tautological belief, I think, that happens. It's not. It's not. No, no. The, the one that does happen is that it must be right because God made it. Yes, that's not tautological. And also, this argument is covered in the Quran. So when Moses goes to Pharaoh and he says to him, I'm God's messenger, and here's the evidence why I'm God's messenger, and you should release the children of Israel and all of this. Pharaoh goes, what about the people before me? Which is, well, they didn't receive your revelation, you know, and uh, he tried to distract the conversation away to people who've never received the message. And Moses gave him a simple reply, which is the same reply that I use when people ask me this question, which is, my Lord knows best about them, meaning God created them. So God knows all of the variables and all of the contingencies and all of the presuppositions and limits and all of the actions that they're going to be doing. So from God's perfect perspective, no injustice will take place. And within that, um, the way he uh, works with Satan. Who works with Satan? Allah. God doesn't work with Satan. In Job. So, so he allows Satan to uh, punish and uh, put various physical and uh, emotional plagues on, jo on Job right. to test him. So they had a discussion and uh, Allah says to uh, Satan, no, I, I, I think he will, he, he, he is just, let me test him. So, so Satan tests him. So, uh, so th uh, that might be a Christian perspective. I don't know about it. it no, it's in the Quran story. It's in the Quran story. No, the, the, the idea of Allah and Satan having a discussion to see this, I, I've but not read that in the Quran. That's the, what they've done, what they do to do is they destroy his life and he's still righteous. Um, so that, that part of the story is true, that, say, that he says um, he goes through physical illnesses, he got, his family abandons him, all of that part I remember. But in, in comparison, what I would say is that these are all uh, kind of man-made and these are all kind of anthropomorphic, whether it's in the Old Testament as well, that it's, uh, you know, I mean, people would say it was a vision by somebody who uh, believed that, that it's the of God in the Bible. However, it's all kind of, it's all kind of stories projected upon uh, the creation. And I, I think but part of the, the, even the desire to test these souls in this equal way is all part of a justice belief system um, where, you know, humans have to create uh, a kind of afterlife in order to justify uh, their existence. Okay, so let, let's deal with both of these separately. So the assertion that these are stories, again, I would say, if you ask me why I believe in the Quran and I give you evidence why I believe in the Quran, or evidence why I believe in God, these are not stories. Even in the Quran, the people at the time, they said these are ancient fables. I mean, it's very easy to make assertions, but we have to look at the evidence. The second point is, you're saying 
you're saying it's a type of opiate for people that there's this ultimate justice. That there's this. It's just a construct. It's a construct, right? It's a construct, opiate, whatever you want to call it, right? But the question really is this: if we have evidence for why Islam is true, then if a perspective comes from it, it doesn't matter if it sounds good, because you know sometimes people say, well, you, somebody's Muslim because it makes them feel good, or it makes them have a, a view of the afterlife. Which, which gives them something to look forward to. But the thing is, that would be the genetic fallacy. Just because it makes them feel good, or just because of that. So what we have to again go into is this. So you've done a bit of reading about Islam and stuff. There's many different angles, but I just want to use one angle. So a prophet makes prophecies, okay? A prophet makes prophecies. Have you read any of the prophecies of the prophet, peace be upon him? I'm aware of uh, a couple. A couple, okay. So first, sure. Firstly, before we get into um, a particular prophecy, would you agree, uh, John? Right? Would you agree that if somebody is giving you information about the future, and information which is falsifiable, meaning he's not telling you something that's predictable, he's telling you something which is risky, telling you something which isn't self-fulfilling, right? And somebody who's giving you not vague ideas, but something particular, then we can say with safety, this is not knowledge which a human being should know. Why, why shouldn't human beings know that kind of thing? Okay. So, it's 2020. In the year 3000, right? So about a thousand years from now. If I make a prediction, and there's some cameras here, if I make a prediction about a future event, and the future event is not something which any of the futurists today are talking about, yeah. it's something unpredictable, it's risky, and it's not yeah, self-fulfilling, yeah. I shouldn't know that information. Why not? Because I do not know the unseen. I can only go by what I know. You don't know the unseen people. That's a belief. Actually, under your worldview, I think everybody sees everything. Yes. But you see, the whole problem with that is that's completely unchallengeable. Because you can it's just simply... Not, it's not totally unchallengeable because... Well, if, if it was not totally unchallengeable, unchallengeable if, if you could actually challenge it, then it wouldn't be pure monism. It wouldn't be pure... This idea that you're saying the universe is a living organism, yeah. which is intelligent, and it's one flow process. Then I didn't, I didn't, I didn't one flow process. Energy. One energy, right? It's a spiritual energy. One Spirit, energy. Spiritual energy. Then from that perspective, anything is possible. Exactly. Yeah, so you can't say it's challenging. It's, it's, it's challenging because no, 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 it's not. No, no, okay. Well, the thing is that if it, you would say that it, uh, Muhammad was the last prophet. So if I wheeled somebody in and they made these predictions um, for a year's time, which met all the conditions that you said, and then they happen, how would you integrate that into your worldview? Uh, that's, that's a good question. And I think fundamentally, I would have to go back to my own epistemology and look at this. So if there is a truth I believe in coming from a source, and there's somebody else who's making a completely contradictory claim, then I have to at first pass accept the idea that they both can't be right. So I believe in the coherence theory of truth. So truth is what coheres with what's out there in the world. This, the, your statement coheres with the state of affairs. So if two people are making two different statements, then I have to know with certainty they both can't be true. That's a self-contradiction, right? So one of them is truthful, yeah, one of so them is... Islam would say that was impossible. So Islam would say that was impossible for a human being to know something like that. It's impossible for someone to know something like that unless God gave them that information. But it's also impossible that God gave them, would give them a prophet, prophetic information according to Islam. Uh, give someone new? Uh, okay, do you know what? This is where things get a little bit tricky, okay? So we believe, and you may like this, I don't, I don't know why, but I get a feeling you like this because of your previous, what you're saying. So we believe revelation from God has stopped, except in the form of dreams, right? 
So if a non-Muslim comes up to me and says to me, in the future, I saw a year from now, this will happen or that will happen. Or if a Muslim comes and says it to me and that thing comes to be true, yeah. that's theoretically possible from an Islamic perspective because For Pharaoh saw true dreams. A non-Muslim and not dream. And not, from an Islamic like, perspective, that's I impossible. Meet, so if I meet you and I just go da, 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 and I just tell you these things. Okay. 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 So can, I, can, time, can I make one more caveat? Yeah. Sorry, John, but there's one more caveat. So we believe in the jinn, which you probably yeah. heard of, yeah. and the jinn, they can give human beings information of future events. But we believe that they mix lies with truth. So if you come to me, you may give me one event which is true. You'll give me a whole bunch of events which are not true. So overall, I know you're, you're inspired by the jinn and if, rather it, inspired. And if it was all true? Uh, from, from Islamic perspective, it's impossible for you to have information. Okay, okay so, that, so that was going back to the question. Are you about to tell me something? No. <laughs> are you worried? <laughs> um, so. So how would you integrate that then? I would, I would say logically that would be impossible from my, under my world view. Yeah, but if it happened, how would you integrate it? I would say... Would this, you have to re-question everything? I would have to accept that this view that's coming is a lie and I would believe in Islam and I would try to, and there's no such thing as a perspectiveless perspective, I would be biased using the Islamic perspective and I'd find faults in this way, either Either, for example, it was a hoax, it was this, it was that. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't step back and say, right, I'm agnostic. I mean, look, there's a lot of people who would say, um, I'm going to be objective, I'm going to step back, and I'm going to not be biased in any way. I would say I'll definitely be biased, and I'll prove this wrong. I think, I think, I think, but that is quite difficult as a position. But I understand it has to be your. But position. I believe it. I believe it. It has to be your position. Yeah. Because it's life and death for you. It's truth. No, but the the decision to believe in a different construct of reality versus an Islamic construct um, is life or death for you. It's, your not life, it's not life and death. Well, no, if you, if you, if you apostatize because of it, that's it, within your existing worldview, that's death. But that wouldn't be the adjudicating factor. For me, what would be most important is what is true. But you're saying that you'd be so super I, I, biased. I, 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 you'd be super biased. I'll give you an example. I'll give but you an example. if you were even with all of that bias, you still found that it was true. No, look, it's kind of like this. It's like saying, what if you can find a square circle? What if you can? What if you can? For me, that's not possible. There is no square circle, right? So for, for someone to come with a worldview which contradicts, as an example, say in the Quran, it mentions the story of the Exodus. It mentions the story of Moses um, and he saved the children of Israel, Pharaoh drowned. Say if I go, and I don't really know about this, but say I go meet a bunch of Egyptologists and they say no such story exists in the history of Egypt, in ancient Egypt. And they say, in fact, Jews never came to Israel. And all of the testimony that they have says the opposite to what the Quran says. I will still believe in the Quran and I'll reject what they're saying. And I'll find the evidence for why this is true rather than accepting what they're saying. Why? Because human beings, and I'm sure you appreciate this. Let's go back to Thomas Kuhn, right? You always have a paradigm and then you have another paradigm and paradigms are what? Dualist. <laughs> Not dualists, not dualists. <laughs> they, dualist. they are dualists. No, no. They are. That, they are okay, that's, okay, that's not my interpretation of Kuhn. My interpretation is these paradigms are incompatible and to change from one paradigm to another is not something that you can do objectively by stepping outside of both. Do you agree with that at least? Uh, I, I would say that uh, I, I would. Yes, so there we go. We agree there. So it's like this. You have a normal science so a normal paradigm, when you have anomalies, then you try to explain those anomalies in terms of uh, the existing paradigm. If someone comes with a new paradigm, then those anomalies fit, but you may have other anomalies, right? So for, for, for me, the way I see it is, I don't like the idea that people say, I look at everything objectively and I never ever have any biases. I believe you 
you should be objective, but once you have a perspective that you have evidence for, you should be biased in favor of that, and I don't believe that's being, um, that's being irrational, because you started off with evidence. So I'm not against objectivity, I believe in objectivity, but I don't like, um, I don't want to be dishonest and say, no, 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 I'll have a perspectiveless perspective, because I think that's nonsense. The, 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 I would say that any, any structure on the whole, any uh, belief in God or, or, or the religions or these kind of things does create a dual, a dualist perspective on life. There's the good, the bad, the evil, um, there's um, uh, Muslims, uh, Christians, there's, there's always in our minds a chapter. There's a, in, in, um, in uh, Indonesia, there's this, uh, this chart and it's, they, they lie down and see each other and they go, chat, 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 and then they go back and then the other, and then they lie down and then the other side of, and it's kind of like a mind just going, it's this way, it's this way, it's that way. It's what this uh, corner is, is really about. It's an example of the split of the mind. Now the thing is that if, if we're trying to define a non-dualist in this kind of holistic perspective of oneness and perfection in this moment, based on conscious spirits, without the human uh, anthropological uh, qualities, if you, another uh, difficulty you might have is if, if humans were the product, I know you're against evolution, if humans were the product of a genetic experiment, right, then, the, then the, who is the creator of that human? Of those humans? Is it the people or the beings that create that, that, that genetic experiment? Or what? Are you referring to uh, panspermia? Uh, you know Francis Crick's idea that life came to Earth on, uh, seeded to Earth by rockets or, okay. Or maybe even just more, more, mechanical, more conscious. Fine, fine. I mean, that's still some form of panspermia, right? Intelligent life elsewhere in the universe, right? So from that perspective, the creator of life would be the aliens. But then the logical question would be, well, who made the aliens? Exactly. So um, the way I see that is, that's a cop-out firstly. I mean, the way I see panspermia, right? Because essentially what they're doing is they're going from a design inference to something else which doesn't fully explain it. Because God as an explanation is an explanation which is self-containing. It doesn't need another explanation. But the idea of aliens, which are limited contingent beings, does. Now, going back to, again, your perspective of non-dualism, monism, whatever it is. Can I, can, can, I haven't quite finished with sure, sure, sure. The, the, So the thing is that you would say, you're, you would say, okay, they've created humanity, which in essence would be in, in contrast to uh, the Quran, the Bible, in regard to clay and Adam and Eve being made out of clay, right? So that would still be in contrast to that. So it would, in some ways, be in contrast to the Quran. But you might say, yeah, but who made the aliens? Which is the next question, right? Who, what are the aliens? Well, the aliens are conscious, and we are conscious. And the commonality between us as humans and animals and aliens and anything is consciousness. And we don't need a book to be aware of that. We don't need to believe in a book to be aware of our, our observer self, our conscious self. What we have found through science is understanding the uh, complications of this physical world, that it isn't the physical world that many people think it is, you know, just from a, a molecular field theory kind of perspective. But my, but my argument fundamentally is that we all can be aware of our awareness and we can all come to uh, a way of understanding our brains and our minds and the conflicts that are caused in our minds. And I guess to some extent meditation is, is part of it. So I would agree with you that we can come to the idea of self-consciousness and awareness without God. But that's not a sufficient condition to say that religion is not needed or God is not needed. That's sufficient reason for you to understand that we can come to perspectives 
without God. But that's not something I deny anyway. That's something no, that no believer would deny. The, 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 the conflict in our arguments is not necessarily that, but just that actually when you have a belief system, whether you're a Christian or a Zoroastrian uh, or a Muslim or a Hindu, you have a worldview and it's also about kind of uh, not just believing on a personal basis, but believing it on this This is has to be shared and run. So it's a difference in, you know, it's not just a, a, an innocent belief, really. It's a, it's a, it's a instrumental element. Yeah. I mean, but I, I wouldn't see anything wrong with that. I know. But from your perspective, you don't either. I, 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 <laughs> because from, my from your perspective, it's all equal anyway. Well, yeah, yeah. From my perspective, it's absolutely fine. Fine, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's perfect. And it plays a different role. You know, these all of these things play a different role. And it's all part of uh, the shape of this, you know, this run of life. You know? And I haven't got a problem with it. But I, I accept to say that I don't think it's a... Uh, I, I do think it's a, it's a... It's not even just a matter of humans making up, it's a matter of, you know, the consensus of, uh, of, of the mind in this reality, creating different pockets of beliefs and understanding of our existence. That's if it's man-made, if. But again, let's go back to this. Do you think it's not possible that God would send revelation? Do you think that's impossible as, a, as, as an idea? I think anything is possible. Okay, so from that perspective, the worldview that I hold is coherent and it's a possibility. You may not believe it and it may not be right in your mind, but it's a possibility. Yeah, it is, yeah. And if everyone can accept that it's a possibility and not necessarily the truth, then that's good enough. No, but then that would be a contradiction because the worldview that I hold and say the worldview that an atheist holds, it's not po I can be tolerant of it from the perspective that I understand that's what they believe and I can't force them. But, I, but ontologically, I can't accept both of our state of affairs are true because they can't both be true. So you have to, I mean, essentially what, you, what, what we have to agree on is that ontologically, there has to be intolerance. From a from a conceptual point of view, only if that's the only if that's the kind of intention of that belief system. If the, if the belief system was about tolerance, then then that's a different matter. Yeah, but all views yeah. that are tolerant, they still have to have inbuilt intolerances. I, I you know, how how does my view? How so, does the non-dualist view have intolerance? Okay, so the non-dualist view, or any view for that matter, I don't want to speak about your view in particular. Well, I am thinking about that. Sure, sure, sure. Because sure. I'm not saying that sure. I would agree with you that there's sure. always going to be intolerance in, in, yeah. in the conflicts of our minds. Sure, sure. But I'm saying, yeah. So the intolerance would be in terms of, say, for example, something that you do agree about, that God should not be described in an anthropomorphic way. God is up in the sky on a chair. I didn't say it shouldn't be. You say I, it doesn't make sense? Yeah. It doesn't make sense. That means you have an intolerance to that view. Okay, um, what... I guess the intolerance that I have, in a sense, is that by having a religion that is uh, that has the constructs of such as Islam, yep. Judaism. I mean, Judaism didn't have hell, did it? Uh, as Muslims, we believe it did, but there was changes, and yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, well that's, <laughs> that's another thing. Um, but yeah, so the so the um, so I'm I'm saying as all the Muslims in the world believe in Allah and that construct, that is in itself, uh, has existence in itself in the conscious world. And so I'm not, in, I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I'm accepting of, of the function of that and uh, the belief structures of it. But I guess, yeah, I'm sure you could argue that I have some from a human point of view. 
but not from not not absolutely from a non dualist So my mistakes. Anything I've said is good is from the universe. <laughs> okay, how would I say that? I would say anything good I say is from God. Every mistake is from myself. But it's really great speaking to you. I'm gonna yeah, yeah, yeah. head off, but I'll probably catch you later. John, you yeah, said. Yeah, yeah, yeah.